Hey, what's going on, my friends? In this video, I want to dive into this conversation, this topic of business credit versus personal credit. I have two different articles pulled up. One is here on Experian, which, as you can see, it's titled Why You Should Separate Business Credit from Personal Credit. And then I also have another article on NerdWallet, which is six major differences between business and personal credit, uh, because I don't think enough people understand the differences of the two of them. I certainly was one of those individuals. If you asked me a year ago, I would have said, doesn't matter, not a difference, pretty much the same thing. My story has changed quite a bit, having done a lot of extensive research with you know, trying to build out my own business credits and, and continuing to, uh, you know, increase my personal credit score as well. But enough from me, let's dive into uh, these two, you know, fairly short articles that help to explain the differences. And furthermore, why you should separate your business credit from your personal credit. So many small business owners use personal credit to run their business. However, doing so could put you at risk if your business is ever in trouble. Plus, many creditors today are moving away from relying on personal credit alone when judging a business's financial health since personal credit is not considered an ideal predictor of business behavior. Furthermore, smart creditors are taking advantage of new blended commercial scoring tools that integrate both personal and business credit attributes to assess and predict small business risk. However, if you are a sole proprietor, your personal credit and your business credit are closely linked in the eyes of banks and other lenders. So it is important to take steps to protect both. You should monitor, evaluate, and protect your credit standing just as you would protect any other business or personal asset. So um, I thought this was a good short little description or way to help with explaining business versus personal credit and why you should probably consider uh, getting that business credit in motion if you haven't yet. And now diving more into you know the actual some actual differences between business and personal credit we're here on nerd wallet again i have a link to both of these articles down below if you would like to just read these and you know not follow along and also while you're here if you haven't yet definitely like this video give it a thumbs up i do appreciate you guys watching and it does let me know you guys appreciate the time and energy put into not only doing the research but making this content so number one difference is that credit reporting policies are not the same. With a personal credit card, your credit card activity is generally reported monthly to the three major consumer credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. But with a small business card, that doesn't always happen. Some small business credit card issuers, including Capital One and Discover, report business activity to both consumer and commercial credit bureaus, affecting both your personal personal and business credit scores. Others like Bank of America and Citi just report to commercial credit bureaus. If you're counting on a small business credit card to boost your personal credit scores, you'll want to make sure you're using one that reports to both consumer and commercial bureaus. And essentially, I'm going to make a new video um, that helps to dive into uh, this a little bit more, helping to break down which uh, lenders, what banks report to both consumer um, and commercial um, credit bureaus. Because as it's saying, some of you might want this. This this is insinuating and suggesting that, you know, if you want to utilize this as a way to help with boosting your personal credit score, well, you definitely want to work with a bank, a lender that's going to report, you know, to both. However, if you're someone that's more on the fence of, eh, I want to make sure they stay completely separate. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, I don't want no personal guarantees tied to anything in which then it's potentially going to affect my personal credit and this, that, and the other. I want them to be completely separate. Well, you definitely want to make sure you look out for that video when I release it. So make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't yet. Number two on this list is credit limits. Small business credit cards often come with more spending power than personal credit cards. 
in part. That's because limits are based on both personal income and business revenue, among other factors like credit worthiness. Revenue that's bigger than your income could result in a higher limit than you'd get on a personal card where you're reporting only personal income to which you have a reasonable expectation of access. A higher limit could be especially useful if your business has steep operating costs. For instance, if you spend a lot on inventory each month. Number three is bonus categories. Certain bonus categories such as travel and restaurant spending are common on both personal and small business credit cards. Some are more specific. Business credit cards are more likely to offer bonus rewards on phone bills, online advertising, or office supplies, for instance. And for bonus rewards at grocery stores or drug stores, you might be better off with a personal card. Ultimately, the best deal depends on your business spending. If your expenses are all over the place, a flat rate rewards card that offers 1.5 or 2% back on all purchases could be a better option. This option is available for both personal and small business credit cards. Next on the list is 0% intro APR periods. On personal credit cards, introductory 0% APR periods are plentiful and tend to be quite long often lasting 12 months or longer. Not so with small business credit cards. While a handful of business cards offer uh, introductory 0% APR terms, they tend to be 9 or 12 months and often just apply to purchases, not balance transfers. Those that do offer promotional balance transfer APRs also charge balance transfer fees, making it more costly to move debt from one small business card to another and pay it off at a lower interest rate. If you're looking for more time or a respite from fees, personal cards give you more options. Number five on this list is bookkeeping benefits. Around tax time, you might want to search through credit card statements for potential deductions. Small business cards generally make that very easy. At the end of each year, many will give you an itemized report of your spending. Personal credit cards generally don't offer reports that are as detailed. Small business credit cards make tracking expenses easier in other ways too. For example, most small business cards offer free employee cards with customizable spending limits. On personal cards, such a feature is harder to find. And last but not least, number six is consumer protections. Consumer protection laws, such as the Credit Card Act of 2009, generally don't apply to small business credit cards. Even though most issuers extend consumer protections as a courtesy to small businesses, it's a good thing to keep in mind since certain protections may not be available in every case. Potentially, on a small business card, your APR could change overnight or you could be charged exorbitant late fees for small infractions. If you're unsure about your issuer's policy, you should call and ask. So, my friends, it should be pretty clear why you want to consider separating the two. And, you know, just me personally, even reading this and thinking about it more and more, I'm like, man, you know, yeah, I have my, I do have a, a LLC form, but I also have my sole proprietorship in which, you know, I'm not too worried about my, my credit being, you know, uh, negatively impacted um, in either, in either um, instance. So it's not something that's really worry, worrying me too much there, but you know, being in a position where you want to just kind of keep things separate and you do want to potentially be in a position to attain or get access to a larger amount of money, you know, you're seeing these bonus reward points are going to be different, which technically you can have a business credit card um, with your sole proprietorship. So that's not really something, but um, those, you know, that consumer protection, that's huge too. But really the biggest, you know, these first two points um, are, are the major two reasons why you want to consider having separate business and personal credit. Ultimately, uh, them being, you know, if you think one might, one is one is already bad compared to the other or something like or something other vice versa. 
um, and you don't want them to be, you know, connected at all, linked in any way or whatsoever, you certainly want to have business credit and your personal credit then, um, and, and, and LLC in that manner, um, more specifically. Um, but also that credit limit amount is going to be much, much higher for a business than it would be um, for an individual. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If so, definitely smash that like button, give it a nice thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you guys can stay up to date on all of our latest content on grants, loans, and credit. But all right, my friends, you already know I got to keep it moving, but I'll see you in the next video. Peace.